The son was blindsided, but the father was still asking. The little boy's eyes filled with tears. The father hugged his son tightly. In 1942, when France was occupied by Germany and Paris was in social turmoil, the family had to move to the free zone. They could not go together, however, because this would arouse the suspicion of the Germans, and they had to move separately, finally reuniting in Nice. After planning the route for his children, the father repeatedly instructed them not to admit that he was Jewish no matter what happened. Looking at the children in the distance, the father shed tears of sorrow. They dragged their skinny bodies onto the train and soon fell asleep. But when his brother Jerry opened his eyes, they were surprised to find that many people had hurriedly jumped off the train and ran desperately in the opposite direction. The scene in front of them scared them. Do they want to run? Of course they had to run. By now, the Germans had already gotten on the train and started checking their papers. They looked around for a place to hide. Fortunately, a priest found them and sat the children beside him. An ease and fear had already filled the children's hearts when the priest suddenly took out the apples to try to calm them down. As the German soldier approached, the priest calmly took out his papers with a firm but smiling look. The soldier looked at the two children and, although somewhat suspicious, let them go. When they arrived at the station, the priest put them on the bus and told the boy not to trust anyone. But the children were inexperienced after all, and the next second they trusted a stranger. The man claimed to be a local guide and said he could help them get to the free zone. They, they immediately paid a deposit of 1,000 francs. At night, they arrived at the appointed place. They did not wait for the guide, but for a large group of patrolling Germans. They hurriedly hid in the gutter. Jerry was frightened. He went into Tom's arms and cried. Fortunately, the guide did not go back on his word, and he took the two children into the woods and across the creek to the border of the free zone. Because of the long walk, Jerry's feet were worn out with blood blisters. Without hesitation, Tom carried Jerry on his back. They walked for a long time and finally arrived at the nice free zone. Here, they also met the people they most wanted to see. The little boy spent all his savings to buy a violin for his mother because it was her birthday. Their family was immersed in the beautiful sound of music. Suddenly, a sharp knock on the door breaks the heart one happy scene. It's the routes. Hide. Jerry hid under the bed and Tom hurriedly climbed up to the roof. Father opened the door to the room. The Routes took out a document trying to get the two boys drafted into the army. The man took the letter, but he was just about to close the door when the Routes stopped him. He entered the house, where everyone was very nervous at the moment. He asks his father if he was just playing the violin and is denied by him. Suddenly, Tom accidentally drops a tile and the sound immediately draws the attention of the Routes. The father took out his non-Jewish papers to divert attention. To his surprise, the Germans were still very insistent on the sound of the violin. In these turbulent times, even music could not penetrate the shackles of war. Just as the father was in a difficult situation, the mother produced another document that turned out to be a royal noble identity immediately, scandalized the crowd, and then he turned to leave. The sudden inspection meant that ice had fallen. In order to keep the children alive, their father sends them to a youth camp. After a brief reunion, they face the separation of not knowing how long they will be together. Jerry shed tears of reluctance. His father hugged him and told him to learn to be strong. But the moment he turned around, he was already weeping. The days of training camp, they no longer have to run away. So live a relatively full life, but also slowly learn to live without their parents. One day, they were peeling potatoes, but a truck hit the awning and became good friends with the driver. He didn't expect that day to be an accident. They tried to hitchhike home to visit their parents, but were found halfway by the Germans. They were taken to the German interrogation office, where they were all caught in suspicious positions. The first to be interrogated was the driver, who was either a Jew or a rebel, and the rebel was shot on the spot unless you admitted to being a Jew. The driver was pinned down, and a shot was fired. They were followed by them. They handed over their false papers, but before the Germans could start interrogating them, Tom said he was not a Jew. But how could the officers believe that? And Tom was thrown straight to the ground. Jerry was so anxious that he pushed the soldier down with all his strength. The officers laughed. He wanted to be so evil. Finally, there was a body check. Because the Jews have a custom, after the birth of a child, must be circumcised body will inevitably have scars. They then recognized them as such. Along the way, they had stopped trusting anyone. The doctor called out to the soldiers and went so far as to say that they were not Jews. The boy doesn't understand why the doctor would help them. 
Maybe he really is Jewish. The soldier pushes open the iron door with his gun, and if the two brothers take the opportunity to escape, they will be killed. Sure enough, they were trapped. The officers in the distance was watching them. Just then, the alert Jerry spotted the shadow of the soldier with the gun, and hurriedly pinned Tom down then pretended to pick up something on the ground. The officers could only lead in disappointment at the sight. The priest in the distance finally breathed a sigh of relief. The children then followed the priest on the bus back to the camp. On the way, they were silent. Their fate was tentative, and they gradually lost faith in life. Just then, they suddenly found their father sitting behind them. So they happily jumped into their father's arms. The father comfortingly stroked Jerry's cheek. When he saw the scars on his face, the child was very distressed. But Jerry continued to show a strong smile. At this moment, the little boy grew up. On the way, the children snuggled in their father's arms. After returning to the camp, the father was reluctant to leave. He did not know that this goodbye is goodbye forever. Soon after, they received a call from their mother. The father had been arrested, and they had to start running in order to stay alive. After the last experience, they fled to a relatively safe town. Jerry found a job delivering newspapers in the town. The boss is a hard worker, but did not know that Jerry is Jewish so he took great care of him and let Jerry spend the holidays with them. Tom went to work as a handyman in the restaurant and also joined the resistance, helping to deliver letters and hidden information. Jerry also joins the resistance and makes a new friend. Mary, she is the daughter of the owner of the bookstore. Young and beautiful, so Jerry is very happy. That day, while they are out on a trip, they find members of the resistance being killed by a group of Nazi soldiers. They were only a short distance of 50 meters. At that moment, there was nothing they could do. Soon, France was liberated and Paris returned to its usual calm. They embraced each other in excitement, and they could finally go home. But at that moment, the owner of the bookstore was criticized by the people as a traitor. They ran back to the bookstore, which was already in shambles. The people picked up the books and smashed them hard at the owner. By this time, the boss had been beaten head bleeding. The situation was urgent and Jerry made one of the most important decisions of his life. Everyone frowned see, and no one believed what he said. When the crowd asked who the Jew who was hidden was Jerry said loudly. At this point, the boss's eyes were filled with horror and remorse. He left tears of emotion because he would never have thought that the people who disgusted him would have such kindness for him. Finally, they returned to Paris and the family hugged each other tightly, except for the father. When Jerry asks where his father has gone, Tom calls Jerry aside. He cried out and hugged Tom tightly. At this point, the marbles in his hand slipped to the ground. He remembered his father, remembered the driver, remembered the priest. This scene reverberated in the mind. War is cruel, but what cannot be extinguished is humanity. I hope every good person can be treated well by life. As the father in the movie said, the departure of a good man will become a star that shines and never stops. I hope the world will have less gunfire and may people have more peace.